The incident began not long after I entered college. I needed a new place close to my school for an easier commute. However, the rental prices at that time were too expensive. Even the tiniest studio apartment required a three-month rent deposit up front, which proved to be a financial challenge for a young man like me. Disappointed, I was walking down the street when a poster on the wall caught my eye. A newly constructed property with a special discount immediately grabbed my attention, and I decided to visit the place. It exceeded my expectations. Not only is it more spacious than other studio apartments, but the entire wall was a big giant window, offering a stunning view. However, the downside was that all available vacant units were for long-term leases, requiring years' worth of hefty deposits in advance. I didn't have that much money, not even a one-month deposit. When I expressed to the real estate agent that it probably wouldn't work out, he asked me to wait for a moment as he went back inside. Upon his return, he suggested that it might be possible to switch the long-term lease to a monthly one, allowing me to rent it on a monthly basis with just one month's deposit. The offer seemed too good to be true. I didn't want to lose this opportunity, so I decided to proceed with the contract immediately. We went down to the first floor to sign the rental contract. While we were in the middle of signing the contract, one of the agents murmured, Don't you think we should tell him? No, there is no need for that. Just sign the contract and that's all. After that, I heard a few more mumbled words. Without much suspicion, I just assumed there might have been another interested party that didn't work out. Quickly, I secured the deposit, signed the contract. Following day, I moved everything except for my mattress and bedding. They haven't arrived yet. Unable to sleep on the floor due to my back pain, I decided to look for the cheapest motel to spend the night. The next day, the security guard of our building rushed over as I was walking in. He informed me that numerous complaints had been filed by neighboring residents due to excessive noise coming from my apartment the previous night. Thudding and heavy drilling noises emanated all night long. He urged me to refrain from these kinds of activities only during the daytime. What are you talking about? I went to the motel to sleep last night. Maybe you got the wrong apartment. I didn't even sleep here, but they mistook the noise for another apartment and accused me instead. I felt unfairly accused, but there wasn't much I could do. Starting my school life as a freshman, I found myself busy adjusting to this new phase of life. Amidst the hustle and bustle of daily activities, I received a call from my mom one day. How are you, my son? Is everything okay? She began with casual conversation, but soon the conversation took a strange turn. My mom advised sleeping with my head facing north, don't let my reflection to be seen in the mirror while asleep, and even suggested installing curtains on the window to prevent any reflection. The advice from mom made me a bit uneasy, as she had never been a superstitious person. After hanging up, I couldn't shake off an odd realization. My mom had never set foot in my apartment before, so how did she know about the layout, the location of the bathroom, the mirror, and the window? I might have mentioned something during our previous conversation, so I thought, and I dismissed it. A few days had passed, and I had been studying overnight for the upcoming exam. Suddenly, the phone rang. It was 1 a.m., who could be calling at this hour, I wondered. It was Mom. How are you? Are you doing okay? Mom's voice sounded a bit unusual, carrying a hint of nervousness and concern. I couldn't help but wonder what was going on. Are you getting enough sleep during the exam period? Then she stopped talking and stayed quiet for a while. With a bit of hesitation, she began sharing a peculiar dream she had. I had this strange dream last night. In the dream, I was looking down at you from above. Then a man covered in dirt and entangled with wires entered your apartment. He stared at you for a moment and began pulling your legs, as if he was trying to drag you somewhere. Of course I didn't take her words seriously. After all, it was just a dream. However, I sensed that Mom seemed genuinely worried, 
so I reassured her that nothing of the sort happened while I was sleeping at home. No nightmares, sleep paralysis, or anything like that. A few days later, I hosted a housewarming party with some close friends of mine. On that day, something strange happened. After we all went to the convenience store to buy some snacks and beers, we entered the apartment. Upon entry, one of my friends remarked, Why is there so much dirt in the foyer? What dirt? Upon closer look, I see cement-like dirt on the entrance floor. I found it odd. I mostly get around on an electric scooter, so my shoes rarely pick up any dirt. Up until that point, I hadn't thought much of it. After all, it was just dirt. We had a great time enjoying delicious food, snacks and drinking beers, engaging in conversations, and eventually running out of alcohol. So one friend and I decided to head out and buy some more. While returning home with some beers, a man suddenly rushed out from our building at an incredible speed. We soon realized it was our friend who had been alone in my apartment waiting. Despite our attempts to call out to him, he seemed oblivious, just kept running like a madman, not paying attention to anything around him. We even tried calling him on his cell phone, but he didn't answer. Giving up on chasing after him, we decided to go back inside the apartment to check it out. We found out he had left without his phone. What's going on? Is he really that drunk? He didn't drink that much, did he? We thought this is one of those crazy things he does whenever he gets drunk, so we were just hoping he would come back later after sobering up and didn't worry much. While we were waiting for him to come back, suddenly, the intercom bell rang. Finally, he is back, we thought to ourselves. However, two police officers showed up on the intercom screen. When I opened the door, there were indeed two police officers standing, and to our surprise, our friend who had rushed out earlier returned standing behind these two officers, trembling in fear. It turned out that our friend had reported being attacked by an intruder while in my apartment. An intruder? I was in shock. The police officers searched the premises, but there were no signs of a break-in or intrusion. They also reviewed the CCTV footage showing the hallway of our apartment. Again, no signs of intrusion, only people showing were me and my two friends entering. Despite the lack of evidence supporting his claim, our visibly shaken friend insisted that he had experienced a threat in the apartment. In the end, the case was dismissed as a false report. After the police left, we asked our friend, Hey, what's going on? Get yourself together. What's wrong with you? After calming him down, he began to describe what he had seen. Having consumed too much beer, he urgently needed to use the bathroom. Feeling a bit drunk and dizzy, he happened to notice a towel rack. As he tried not to lose his balance, he grabbed onto the towel rack and as he grabbed, he looked down and saw a pair of muddy work boots below. Startled, he instantly began running for the door. Without even looking back, he ran all the way to the police station. In that moment, everything pieces together. The cement-like dirt at the entrance, the muddy work boots, the man with electrical wire wrapped around his body appeared in my mom's dream and tried to drag me somewhere. And finally, a man my friend just saw. I felt that I should tell someone. Since mom was the one who shared it with me initially, I called mom in response about the man both her and my friend saw. My mom advised me to leave this apartment immediately. I began to pack up quickly. On the way out from the building, I confronted the real estate agent on the first floor. Just what had happened in that apartment? I inquired, pressing them to answer. One of the agents apologized and began to describe what had happened. According to the agent, there was a huge accident during the construction of this building. A man who worked as a laborer at the site was in this accident and suffered permanent injury. The company compensated for the injury by providing him both the monetary and housing, the same apartment I've been living in. The man, however, continued to suffer due to the after-effects with no one to take care of him. Eventually, he died alone after much suffering. The subsequent tenant who moved in immediately after also reported seeing a man covered in dirt in the apartment and left after only two months. After the incident, even though I have not personally seen it, 
I began to doubt my personal conviction after the testimony of my trusty witnesses. I used to be a staunch denier of supernatural phenomena, 